<laughs> yeah, exactly. We had trouble with Facebook, but we got it back up now. Amen. Hallelujah. I'd like to welcome uh, visitors uh, here and on uh, live stream. Amen to the door. Church here in Northwest Oklahoma City, hallelujah, a place where Jesus Christ is still changing lives, amen. We do have a few announcements, amen. Let's not forget <clears throat> our regular service times, amen, Sunday morning, of course, at 1030, and then Sunday night at 6 o'clock, there's always a different sermon, amen, so be looking forward to that. Uh, we don't play the same sermon over, it's always another sermon in the evening service. Mondays, we have Music Mondays. On uh, and Facebook, so be looking forward to that. We usually post it around seven o'clock, and then our uh, Wednesday night service, Hallelujah, uh, starts at seven o'clock. So don't forget that, Hallelujah. Uh, either tune in or as uh, things are being lifted, as uh, some of the restrictions are being lessened, Amen. We are allowing people to come into the church with just certain requirements, hallelujah, and so just please follow along, amen, but I do want to say amen for you to come, that just there's not going to be nursery, so we encourage if you have children or a <clears throat> bunch of children, um, the requirement is that each family stays to themselves, stays uh, in their row, and so there will be no nursery or Sunday school, so I just encourage you just to uh, stick to it with us on live stream until that restriction is lifted. And then also, if you're up in age, amen, I believe 65 or older, please also stay home because you're more susceptible. And then also, another thing, even young babies are, I think, more susceptible also. So it's just best to stay home, be safe, hallelujah. But if you are able to make it, amen, we uh, love to have you. We do, have, we do wipe things down. Um, after every service when the people are here, and so we're doing all the precautions, amen, to keep us all safe, hallelujah. And then also, we had a little um, break last week, but this Friday we will have the next episode on Freedom Fridays, and so uh, be looking forward to that also, amen. On our construction, we have a carpet on top of the, the platform now, amen, so we're we're slowly but surely getting things done, so be praying for us, hallelujah. Um, let's see. I believe that is all the announcements. Let's give God comes and takes up the offering, hallelujah. Uh, good morning, since on, it is not... Did you grab the wrong one? Maybe I did. I have to correct microphone. <laughs> if you hear me too, I'll go ahead and get started. Thank you, sir. All right. I love that song. We want to see Jesus lifted high. That's that's always the main heart of a church, or at least it should be. If that's not their main heart, then they then they're not a church. Club, and that's not that's not what we are here. We want to see if Jesus lifted high. Yes. So for offering this morning, I have, uh, if you've heard it before, <laughs> it's um, there's a, a man who kind of got some wealth to himself. He didn't really, he wasn't extremely rich, he wasn't extremely poor, but he was diagnosed with a, a terminal disease, and he knew that he was going to die. And so he said that uh, you know, well, I, I I worked hard for what I had, and what I'll do is. I'm going to play it smart. I'm going to put all my money in a briefcase. I'm going to put this briefcase in the attic so that when I pass away, I can grab it on the way up. <clears throat> you know what happens, you know, everything. And the wife, you know, she's mourning, but then a couple weeks go by, and, and a close friend that heard about this plan said, hey, did you ever check to see if that briefcase was still in the attic? And she said, no, I, didn't, I forgot all about it. Let's go look. They go up there, and sure enough, the briefcase is still there. And she said, see? I knew we should have put it in the basement. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of an irreverent joke. But, <laughs> but it does kind of show that the way we act and the way that we gather things for ourselves, it's almost as if we know that we can take it with us. And we know that we can't. 
we're so busy in our life to get this and get that. Oh, I gotta have my hustle. I gotta get this. I gotta get that. And for what? We're talking about eternity. In, in, in 10,000 years from now, in heaven, will it even matter what you're trying to gather for yourself? And Jesus has something to say about this. He says in the, if you open your Bibles to Luke chapter 12, starting here in verse uh, 33. <clears throat> Sell what you have and give alms. Provide yourselves money bags which do not grow old, a treasure in the heavens that does not fail, where no thief approaches nor moth destroys. Verse 34, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The only way you can say verse 34 is where your heart is, is where you put your treasures. Where, where you're investing shows where you're at too. So it's like, you know, if you, if you look at what you've invested in your life, that's where your heart is. And is that where God wants you to, your heart to be? He's saying that you can store up treasure for yourself in heaven. He's saying that you can take what you have in this life, the time that he gives you, the gifts that he gives you, the money, the finances, all these different things. You can invest it in eternal purposes. You can invest it in God's kingdom. And he says in verse 33, an example of that is sell what you have in your bonds, <clears throat> providing yourselves money bags that don't grow old. And so he has this principle at play here on earth that there are things you can invest in here and now. I'm saved because somebody else gave of their time, gave of their money, gave of their different things. You know, we're pulling offerings, so of course the focus for this opportunity right now is to give money. But this should be throughout our whole lives. Everything that God gives us, you know, I think about the story of the talents. God doesn't ask, how much did you make with what I gave you? What did you get me? And he doesn't ask, he says, what did you do with it? And if we're unsure of how to invest, our time. We need to ask God for that. Well, so if God is giving you an amount right now, then you need to be obedient to that because he has a purpose for it. We're talking about eternal rewards. We're talking about eternal purposes. We're talking about investing in something that he is doing in the lives of others, not just yourself. He wants to. And this is an opportunity to do that. I'm on reduced hours right now. The pastor talked about that a second ago. And God, what you're giving. Continue to give the same amount, and I've got you. It's been, what, two or three months of this now. And I look at my bank account, I'm like, no, I shouldn't have that much. I mean, it's, I'm not rich, oh, no. you know, and <laughs> this whole time I've been sustaining and peaceful. And I've just been seeing things that aren't even just financial blessings, but also just personal blessings. These are treasures that I've stored away in myself in heaven that I'm currently withdrawing interest from in this life. And he wants to do the same for you. He wants to give you that opportunity this morning. So there's four different ways to give. If you're going to give financially, you can do Cash App, you can do PayPal, Google check cash money orders things like that and uh, and that's all i have so i'm going to pray for this offering <clears throat> lord heavenly father thank you for giving us the opportunities to give into your kingdom to sow into your kingdom lord to do just different things when we invest to see you lifted high because you have set things according to your purposes and your will and we thank you for the blessings that you give us and we just this gift and all who give in jesus name amen amen Let's give God praise as Pastor Frey comes back. Lord, Heavenly Father, we love you and we thank you and praise you and lift you up. Amen. You my things here. Hallelujah. Like that Swiss old beggar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. I'd like to say that. To all the moms out there, amen, uh, especially the ones that are go, go to this church, amen, uh, Sister Laura, Sister Faye, Sister Stephanie, amen, um, Sister Santana, um, and then even Sister Liava, hallelujah, and if I'm missing somebody, just sorry, I'm still trying to think about my sermon and a bunch of others. Yeah, Sister Debbie, Deborah, amen. Um, so I'm trying to get everybody, <laughs> amen. Yeah, since we haven't had to meet in a while, amen, sometimes names get skipped, hallelujah. Even want to say uh, happy Mother's Day to um, uh, George's wife, Nancy, hallelujah. Uh, I don't know if they do live stream or if they've been joining us, amen. But <clears throat> moms, amen, are very... A blessing from God, hallelujah. If you open your Bibles, amen, to 1 Thessalonians 2, 7. And as you're opening to that portion of Scripture, I want to 
I believe it's a poem, but uh, it's a light and uh, it goes with what I want to preach this morning. It's by John C. Baines uh, Jr. <clears throat> it says, A little one's feet need to guide them every day. Short little legs need longer legs to help them not to stray. Small little hands need stronger hands that teach them work and play. Young little knees need bended knees to show them how to pray. Cute little mouths need wiser mouths in learning what to say. Precious little hearts need pure hearts teaching Christ's loving way. What I want to preach this morning is that a mother's love reflects the love of the Lord. And let's, as I'm thinking about moms and mothers, actually we can go, uh, I kind of went back and forth, but I actually a couple different ways that it just, it's all included. Uh, the way a mother loves, amen, is biblical. There, there should be a they do it the right way. But also having this love that reflects the love of God is also how you win people to Christ. So let's read our text this morning. As apostles of Christ, this is 1 Thessalonians 2, 7. As apostles of Christ, we could have been a burden to you, but we were gentle among you like a mother caring for her little children. See, a mother's love reflects the love of the Lord deep in its capacity and generous in its application. You know, it's, it's, it's a true saying when, when people are asked the question, what does the world need now? And in all reality, and it is truthful, the world needs love. Yes. You know, some people will say, derivative of true love. Amen. See, a mother, she awakes in the middle of the night to nurse a hungry infant or care for a sick child, our husband, our, you know. Her intuition injects love at points of pain. I've seen it in my own children and other mothers. You know, when a, 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 a young child or even an older child gets, gets a boo-boo and mommy comes in and when they're little comes in kissing, oh, it's all better. And inquires, amen, it makes it all better at these points of pain. Could be situations. In situations that require extensive encouragement, a mother's there. A mother's love lingers long in conversation and understands with her sensitive heart. She loves because Christ's love compels her to love like him. Amen. This is why we constantly say that you can't really know love unless you know the love of Christ. You can't really know love unless you know the unconditional love of God. You can't learn to show that love unless you know God. And so I want to preach a sermon, amen, I have titled Loving Way. Like I said in the opening, amen, is that her love understands. And so that's what I want to kind of look at. The second verse of our main text, amen, verse 8 1 Thessalonians 2, it says, So being affectionately desirous of you, we have imparted unto you, not the gospel of God only, but also our own souls, because you were dear to us. See, these two verses, amen, just shows the heart of a mother. Amen. Not only do they want to instill the gospel of God, or they want to instill... The, the ministry and the love of God, but they all themselves because there's this connection. See, a mother's love is loyal and understanding. You, you can't the love of a mom because, man, these children can do some crazy things and still the mom is saying, oh, my baby! They can be murderers. They can do all kinds of dirty and dexterous things and the mom is still, that's my child. And so a lot of times it comes with an understanding a child may be in trouble, but mom is always full of compassion.
compassion and acceptance. But see, uh, it, we live in a world that's fallen. And so in all reality, to, to be truthful, there's not this. But a lot of this has to do is because they don't know Jesus or they haven't cultivated that relationship with God. But I'm coming to you this morning with how a mother love should be. Now, if you're, no, don't get discouraged now if you're not at that point. You can start today. You can start learning. A mother's love can be blind in its loyalty, but her offspring never doubt where they are welcome. See, even in the life of Jesus, John 19, 25, it says, Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother. And as I was going and studying this out, if you look through pretty much the whole crucifixion of Jesus Christ, there was mainly Jesus' mother, a few women, and only, if I remember right, only one of the disciples. All the other disciples were gone, but yet the mother understands. She knew that even though they could have been chastised. They could have been, oh, you're the mother of this man we're crucifying and ended up in jail or whatever the case may be or even uh, uh, tormented. But she knew she had to see her son through. This was a love of a mother that is God. See, Jesus was rejected by angry, jealous men and abandoned by his closest friends. But his mother was waiting with him to the bitter end. So that's one of the good things that some people have gotten right. Now, we don't pray to Mary like some religions do. We don't hold her up as an idol. We just use her as an example. This was Jesus' mother. And she stood there to the bitter end, was there, amen, uh, and maybe at points in time to even comfort or just let him know as a mother would. It's like, you know, baby, I'm there. I may not be able to do anything, but I'm here. She understands. She is loyal. She sticks through thick and thin. That is the love of a mother. Jill and Pat Williams were parents of 12 children. Four were bought biologically theirs. Four were adopted from Korea. And four were adopted from the Philippines. In 1990, they were also parenting two foster daughters. Mr. Williams says most of the time people ask, are all of these kids yours? Or is this some kind of picnic? <laughs> she quickly assures them they're all mine, and believe me, it's no picnic. <laughs> the next thing I want to look at, and from this funny story, is that a mother's love has a super capacity. A mother's love has the capacity to be a mother to those who are not biologically their own. Now, in my story, that shows that they adopted these children technically, legally, they're theirs. But I'm also talking about even like a spiritual mother or just a mentor or a leader, a coach. Amazingly, a loving mother can informally adopt people for a season and love on them emotionally, physically, spiritually. She opens her home, shares her food, gives her time dispenses her wisdom. But a godly mother also includes, encourages obedience to follow Christ. How, how do I know that this is a biblical standard? Some of you scholars are probably already thinking about it, but Romans 16, 13 is a very short text. A whole lot. Paul says, greet Rufus, chosen in the Lord, who has been a mother to me too. Mm -hmm. 
See, moms sometimes mother greatness that is not even their own. In this portion of the text, it says Rufus' uh, mother it was in a literal sense, and then Paul was a figurative one. This is an awesome picture of an instance of the delicacy and tenderness of Paul. His love for his disciple and the mother. I mean, look at this. This is Paul who we're talking about. One considered one of the greatest apostles, and Rufus' mother is talked about by this man. Mm -hmm. Not even her own, but yet Paul shows this affection. I remember there's some of the stories, even though this was uh, my wife and uh, my stepmom, I mean not stepmom, my mother-in-law, getting those things mixed up, <laughs> mother-in-law. But this shows the heart of Sister Sandy. She was the mother of the neighborhood. Everybody would come to her house, felt comfortable to stick around and stay around and hang out. And she was the mom. And people even called her mom, even though it was in a figurative sense. Because she was there for her and shows the mother's heart. And even now, when she got saved, that even transformed even more to how she was in God. He talks of this woman as, uh, Paul talks of this mother as if they were the same family. See, Christianity is of all who embrace it together. It makes them feel that they are one great family, united and joined by special attachments. You know, there's times I even said, and, you know, I even now, I since or apart, I've even talked about pastors where I could go sister to now being second parent because when I used to go visit my sister in Amarillo, I used to hang out with the boys all the time. And they're all pastors, not Pastor Adam, Pastor Anthony, Pastor Aaron. They're they're my homeboys. But that was like my way from home, you know, stay with my sister, she's my sister. Pastor Robert was just now. I used to go and eat at their house. I used to stay the night, sometimes two, three nights. Sometimes I wondered even if my sister was like, man, you came to see me, but you're over there all the time. <laughs> but she was a mother. And even at the point now, I can guarantee that that church does the same thing with Sister Janelle. She's like the mother of the church. Right. She's that spiritual mother. But a super capacity, this is... These, these, they have this capacity to just bring these people in, just make them feel welcome, feel at home, and, and able to go to them and open up to. They're like, man, I don't even tell my mom this stuff. Where they, they just open up their heart and ask for advice, and whether it be rebuke or encouragement, they, they readily take it because the mother's heart. See, this portion of scripture, how valuable the mother is in Christianity and even in Paul's life. I mean, I mean, think about it. Paul says, who has been a mother to me too. When you, when you think about a mother, she's nourishing, she's taking care, she's thinking about future. That's one of the main problems of women is that they worry too much. But a lot of it has to do with worrying about their children. The what ifs. But a godly mother will be like, you know, yes, I, I'm concerned about this, but you know, I'm giving it to God. I'm just going to instill them to follow Christ. Amen. And can I say that it affected Paul to the point that, you know, I mean, think about this. Rufus's mother knew who Paul was. His past included. She could have been included in the day that Rufus's mother was saved. And she brings in this person that used to kill Christians, used to kill more, and yet she still instills into this man. And Paul is one of the great apostles of the Bible. See, a godly love from a mother, amen, 
has such capacity that you know what you can reach and touch people that you have no idea. Right. I've even seen it in my own life. I mean, there's teenagers that were growing up as we were talking about this morning. We were over the teens, amen, for like 10, 15 years. And at times, that's what they, you know, I've even heard some other parents that used to call one of the teenagers like, are you going back over to your second parents? <laughs> Who are you hanging out with today, your second Because of that heart of, you know what, it doesn't matter who it is. It's like, if they're gonna if they're gonna be in my life, I'm gonna show my best to lead them in the right direction. See, this is why Christianity is so important because it it, it gives you the correct principles and the correct way to lead life, no matter where you're at. See, this morning I'm talking about mothers, and actually tonight I'm gonna talk about mothers also. You know, Father's Day is coming up, and eventually I'll be talking about fathers also. The Bible talks about marriage, it talks about relationships, but we need to, as a mother, we're going to point them in the right direction, so that, you know, someday they might come out to be the next Paul. Mm -hmm. But you know what, a mother's still going to love them, even if they don't come out to be the next Paul. They just might be the next... I don't know, I, I, I hate to say janitor because I don't think janitor is like the lowest of the totem pole. Well, how about I say if they were homeless and out on the streets, the mom would be like, that's my life. Bound to do great things. Amen. And then you know, everybody else is like, you've been like that for like five, ten years. That's my baby. That's that capacity. And then when it's coupled with the love of God, oh my God, the capacity goes even farther reaching. Last thing I want to look at, amen, this morning is that mother's love is gentle. Like God is gentle toward his children. He calls us to love and to lead like Jesus. Love serves people and does people with rigor. 2 Timothy 2. 24 and 25. And they served on the Lord, but not quarrel, but be gentle to all, able to teach, patient in humility, correcting those who are in opposition. If God perhaps will grant them repentance, so they know the truth. Now, it's not a, a, a ported text, or uh, Paul's not talking to mothers, but I mean, it follows along with what a mother's love is and how we should all be. Yes. If we're truly going to lead people to Christ, we need to have this type of love. And the best way to look is look at how a mother, a godly mother, teaches and treats the child. But even more so, this portion of the text says, they Servant of the Lord. A godly mom is a servant. Amen. Pearl, but be gentle all, able to teach, patient in humility, correcting those. I like how some of the other translations, it says correcting those who are rebelling, correcting those who don't agree with you. Because the end of the verse, in verse 25 says, so that they the truth. The truth is, is that God loves them beyond measure. Yes. The truth is, is that you know what God placed this gift before us called moms. It's gentle. Now, some of these moms, you may be thinking in your head, well, they <laughs> messed that up. But how about I'm, I'm going to go there? It says there's a voice in your head that whispers. You'll never get this mom thing right. This is going to mess up your child forever. I know some moms, amen, they beat themselves up over these very sayings, these very words. But I want to recognize these accusing statements are the voice. It's a voice of condemnation, of shame, of blame. It's to pull you down. 
and leave you in destruction. That's not the voice of a loving God. Amen. See, he's gentle. His voice speaks the truth in love. It can. And it's it's just the truth. You will mess up. You will say things you don't mean in in a, in a, in a rage of emotion at a volume that you didn't plan on. You will snap at your kids simply because they're easy targets. But here's where I want to encourage every single mother in a loving way. God doesn't expect us to be perfect. And so that means even mothers are off the hook. I know some mothers, they, they take great pride in doing everything and having everything organized. And then when that organization is off, they, they think they're a bad mother. What God really wants, or all he wants, is our repentance for when we fail. When you miss the mark, don't brush away your sin with self-glorifying platitudes of, well, I'm enough, or I did enough. But don't also beat yourself up. Instead, we all need to go to the one who redeems our mistakes and gives us the grace to carry on. Can you say amen? amen. See, that's one of the great things about a, a godly mother. Having this attitude... And knowing who God is, God is a God who wipes the slate clean. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes that's very hard in family. Because you see how they are every day. You see, you know, you live with them. Mm -hmm. You get on each other's nerves. They disappoint you. But see, if, they, if you lead them to Christ as a loving mother would, They will come back and repent. They'll, they'll strive and start, in all reality, start over if you allow them to. Because God promised us a new start. One thing I have learned, just even being a father and this applies as a mother, is learning that God gives you the grace to apologize mm -hmm. to your child. Oh, I'm the parent, I shouldn't know. That's showing how a child should live. That you know what, own up to your mistakes. Right. That's a hard thing. That that goes back to the, the text in Second Timothy two twenty four, uh, actually twenty five. It says, "Patient in humility, right. correcting those who are in opposition." Yes, your child may have been wrong, but maybe you did something that you should have done, and you come back and be like, "You know what, you're wrong here, but I was wrong in doing this. Forgive me." See, God will give us the grace to speak words that build up our children and not winning people over to Christ. Having this loving heart, doing it in a loving way. Because we don't want people coming in, amen, and all they do is just feel the guilt. No, we want them to feel conviction so that they change. We're not here to tear them down. We're to, here to, to actually put all the pieces back together. As a vessel of and that's where we gotta look at mothers. I mean, they are there, they're they're constantly thinking about their children. I'm telling you that they do more so than a father does. More fathers are more one track minded. They're playing a video game, they're playing a video game. You know? A mom, if she's playing a video game, I wonder what my child's doing right now. <laughs> where are they at? Maybe I should ask them to play the video game with me. You know, the father's like, ah, I'm playing, I don't want no distractions. But they're thinking about their children constantly. But that's one of the things. Moms are works in progress too. Yes. See, that's one of the things we're all learning. And that's one of the things we need to understand is that <laughs> you learn as you go. Yes, you're going to make mistakes. But the reason, that's one of the great things is you really don't know how your kid is going to be their personalities are different. 
And so you can't compare your kids to another mom's kids. Because their personalities are different. They're at different ages, different levels. We found that out very quick. Well, and it, it, it's even there's a, a, a thing in the world that it's almost standard that children or kids, girls, mature quicker than boys. And then for some people, their boys take a long time. They're, they're in their 20s and they're barely maturing. And then their daughter turned nine and she's like, Acting like she's 30. You know? <laughs> but that's the difference. Somebody else's children are not that way. But see, that's where a godly mother is going to come in with a loving heart, a loving way, gentle understanding with super capacity to just receive them as they are to help them to reach the next level. See, just as we are God's handiwork, Parents, mothers need to also look at it this same way that God has basically loaned us these children and he's using us as vessels as we learn in his love to teach them to learn in his love. And a godly mother, just like God, as God keeps chiseling and shaping us, a godly mother does the same. Shaping their children. Shaping those around us. That's why I can't just say children because there's uh, other people. There's even people that have their parents alive today, but they're in a different city that I even consider myself like my child. Well, for one, they they hate all the time. Two, they're eating our food all the time. So I might as well call it my child. <laughs> but God, as mothers, will keep chiseling and shaping us how we reflect more of him each day. So that's really the whole idea of parents, godly people. I, I could go into ministers and coaches. If they're godly coaches, this is what they're trying to do. And even from what I'm preaching this morning, as I am preaching, that's what every single sermon is trying to do in a loving way is help you, teach you to reflect Christ more and more. Each and every day. And so this morning's example is godly mothers. Will help us. Will help a man. Will help us prideful men. Learn how to love and strive and push people to reflect Christ more in a loving way. But more and more each and every day. I said it once before. A godly mother's love reflects the love of the Lord. And so if you have a mother that is doing that or is striving or is trying, then be thankful because that is a gift from God. Because she may not say it, she may not show it, but you know what? She does understand. And I, I wish that all teenage girls would understand this. So something switches in their mind when they become a teenager. You just don't understand. She does. She's had those feelings before, but you know what? She actually probably, and I can say this for myself, that she understands more than the father does. Because that's what she's always considering and worrying about. But see, that's, that's in all reality, that's the way it should be. That's, God, that's God's design. I had a post up here. I don't think I have it this month, but <clears throat> God's, uh, I forgot how to, what it's titled, God's order. It's God, the man or the father, and then the mother, and then the children. So in all reality, God's ministry in his order is God takes care of the man, the man takes care of the woman, the woman takes care of the children. So if the man is doing his, his part right in the mom, then the mom's going to flourish and, and do what she needs with the children. That's God's order. But see, then that even goes back that it's, it's a blessing. It just returns. If a man does what he needs to do, she'll be a loving mother, a loving wife, and it'll bless both the man and the children. Amen. 
Because we're all here. We all need to take this exampleship, amen, to teach Christ lovingly. And that's why I tell the sermon that <clears throat> we all can have this ability of understanding, of super capacity, and also being gentle. Looking at our exampleships, a mother's love reflects the love of the Lord. Let's remember that. As I have every head bowed and every eye closed this morning. Hallelujah. So grateful and thankful for the moms, the mothers, the wives, amen, that I all have the, I have the privilege of being in their lives and them being in mine. But as you've seen in the exampleship and what I've been preaching, that this teaches us to push people to Christ. So first and foremost, amen, if you're not in Christ, I hope this sermon helped you to see the love of God or how it should be this exampleship that the Bible lays out for you and I. Because I know there's people out there and maybe your mother disowned you, maybe left you for adoption, and that's one of the biggest things that when people, when parents leave, when mothers leave, they're like, was I not good enough? Really, that's just, you know, that's something between the mom and God. It has nothing really to do with you. But I can tell you that God can be that parent for you. That the reason maybe this mother did what she did is she didn't have Christ. She didn't have God in her life to, to help her in making the right decision. But will you make the right decision this morning? And accepting Christ as your Lord and Savior because you know what? He does understand. He does have the capacity. He's God. And he's not some God. He's not some man in the sky that just wants to reap destruction or just it glories in, in your torment. No, he's gentle. He knows when. To bring correction, when to bring rebuke, but he knows when to bring encouragement. And he does it in a loving way. More so than you and I. More like a godly mother. So if you're in this place or you're on social media and you don't have Jesus as your Lord and Savior this morning, if you'd like to accept it, we're going to say a prayer, but I want to address first or next. Excellent. Those that are away from God. Those that are like the prodigal son or those that are the, the decisions in life. Or maybe you, maybe you blame your mother because of how you are. Because if she wasn't a godly mother. She didn't show the godly love. I'm telling you today that you know what? It doesn't matter if she was that way. Because I guarantee there has been God placed people in your life that you can look to as examples. But you allow society to shape you. allowed other things to shape you. And this morning you want to get it right. Come back to God. Knowing that he's a loving God. That he's here with open arms and says, you know what, I, I take your mistakes, but just repent. I take all your past, but just repent. And I'll wipe it clean. If that's you, not saved, but also need to rededicate your life, won't you say this prayer out? my sins. I believe in you. And you rose again because you love me. And I thank you. And I pray you help me to live for you. In Jesus' name. Amen.
If you said that prayer, man, please comment, please let us know, call us, hallelujah. We want to be able to talk with you and help you, amen, with your new journey. Because now you're a new creation. There's a, a new doors that are opening up for you because of this. Saints of God, this morning, especially you moms, maybe you've been beating yourself down. Maybe there's things that you need to address this morning. Like I said, all he wants is for you to repent when you fell. He doesn't want you to beat yourself up. He doesn't want you just to brush it away. He wants you to deal with it. Godly way. And that's coming to him. We sing a song, he's, he's our refuge, our strength. In those times where we feel weak, in those times where our last nerve has gone, our anger, our frustration. We say things that are not right. God still loves you and God can still help. He's your strength. He's your refuge. He's your comfort. He's the one that will help you. And you know what? That's where apologizing comes. Yes, you may have done it wrong, and maybe your kids your kids are going to be scarred. But no, if you come back and apologize like a godly woman would, a loving, godly mom, they'll have the utmost respect for you. See, this is why we need God. This is why we need Jesus. Because he helps us in all aspects. And saints of God, if that is you this morning, God is dealing with you on whatever area it may be. Take this time as we see. And maybe if you're if you're an aspiring mother, then take this in. Apply it to your life so you have an understanding when you do have your children. That you'll love like God. That you'll treat every situation in a loving way, not out of anger but out of love. The altars are open, amen. Let's sing this song.
godly love reflects the love of God, reflects the love of the Lord. Amen. I mean, that's, that's one of the things that pushed Jesus Christ. Amen. His motivation was love, love for people, love for people that even when they were wrong, he still was able to teach. He was patient in humility so that all may know the truth. Hallelujah. Let's celebrate because without them, amen, we would not be here. Even if they're not a righteous one. God still uses people, and sometimes he'll even use people that are wrong. But see, that's still out of love. So I encourage you, amen, if you have a mom, please call them up. If you're not around them or not in the same city, amen, but try to do something for them. And then uh, before we close in prayer, we do have, and we're going to try to just go around. We have roses for the moms, amen. It's always a token of our appreciation as a church. Hallelujah. And uh, we're going to close in prayer, but as we close in prayer, let's also be praying for our mothers, praying for our mom, because it's, in all reality, that is, that's, it's one of the toughest positions in the world. But yet, when you're in God, you have help. Amen. In God and direction and like I said, having a godly love as a mother can reach so many souls. And that's what we need. Amen. Amen. So let's close in prayer. Hallelujah. Lord, have a thanks and glory. Lord, for your word and we thank you, Lord, for our moms. We pray, Lord, that you pour out your blessing upon those, my God, especially show favor and anointing to those that are following after your steps, and we pray, Lord, for those that are not doing it right, my God, Lord, that they get it right, and that they would turn their way to you, because we know, Lord, that they are still a blessing, no matter if they're on the wrong path. We're asking, my God, Lord, for your guidance and direction. We are thanking you, my God, Lord, for your providence, for your destiny and your anointing. And we thank you and give you all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, amen, for joining us. Don't forget about tonight's service. We'll be going live at 6 o'clock, amen. Um, hopefully we'll have those fixed by tonight. So uh, Facebook kind of been cutting out.